Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Elder Michael Stibbick with Higher Ground Temple at 203 Vine Street in Camden, New Jersey. Welcome back to I Know I'm Royalty. That's right, I know that I am a child of God. Amen. I know that I've got a special place in His heart. Amen. I know I've got access to everything that the kingdom has to offer. Amen. And you know what? If you're a child of God too, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have access to everything that the kingdom has to offer as well. So let's get back into relationship with our Father. Let, let's build it up. Amen. Let's earn His trust. Why? So he can turn the keys to the car over to you. Amen. Because although we have access to everything in the kingdom, God is not going to give us everything in the kingdom if he knows we're going to misuse it, if we're going to abuse it, if it's going to end up doing us harm. Amen. So here we are on I Know I'm Royalty. It's, a, it's another Monday morning, another beautiful day. Amen. That I am glad to see August 10th. It wasn't promised that we were going to make it here. And yet here we are today. Um, God has kept us. He watched us through the night, made sure we woke up nice and early this morning, amen, to get this done, to get about his work, to do what he has called us to do, amen, and I am glad to be here, I am honored to be here, I am thankful for each and every person um, that watches these things, that makes comments on them, um, that lets me know, amen, that what I'm doing is not in vain, that it is out there, that it is helping some people, um, so I am grateful for that, I'm grateful for everyone that tunes in, I see Patricia. Patricia Phillips is on early this morning. Good to see you, Patricia Phillips. We have a great word for you today. We have a great word coming today, but we want to start off, amen, we want to start off with a little bit of prayer, amen. So we just thank you, God. We thank you for waking us up this morning, God. We thank you for starting us on our way. This is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it, God. Uh, we ask you, Lord, um, that everyone who needs this word that we're offering today will tune in, will see it, God. I ask you, Lord, to set me aside, God, um, to, that you have given me the message, God. Now you arrange the word, you put them together the way that the people need, God. I ask you, Lord, that all hearts and minds be prepared to receive this word, God, um, that there be good fertile soil for the seed to land in, God, that when it lands there, Lord, that it's nourished, that it's watered, and that it bears good fruit, God. We ask you, Lord, just to help us today, God. Sometimes things go right in our lives, God. Sometimes things go wrong in our lives, God. But we ask you to keep us with a good attitude as we react to them, God. We ask you to keep us always positive, always focused on you, always relying on you, God, because we know Know, um, that you are there to back us up, to watch over us, to extend the good times, Lord, and to shorten the bad times. So we seek your face today, God. We thank you for, for watching over us, for protecting us, and we count on you to provide us everything we need to make it through this day. So we ask you, Lord, just to be with us through this lesson. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. And we've got Pamela Vasquez coming on this morning as well. I see uh, my lovely wife, Jerry, is on this morning. Amen. Thank God uh, for all of you tuning in. I thank God for my lovely wife who works uh, behind the scenes on this. Amen. Uh, make, make sure everything, make sure my shirt's all nice and ironed so I come on here looking good. She makes sure that the lighting is all right. She makes sure the backdrop looks okay. She makes sure that she gets those scriptures up there. Amen. So that to help and encourage the people. And we have a word for you today. Amen. We have a word for you today that, th that this is really one of the keys to a consistent, a peaceful life. This is a key, amen, to, to, the, to, to, the, to the good times lasting longer and the bad times, the troubles, the trials that we face being shortened, amen? Because sometimes if, if we don't get this one thing under control, we can be on a roller coaster ride all the time. Something good happens and we're high and we're feeling good and everything's good. Craig Buffington, good to see you coming on this morning. We got an important Important word for you today, but because what do we we want to be on that steady incline, right? We always we want things to be getting better. We don't want things to be getting worse. We don't want to be on that roller coaster where we're up one minute, we're down the next minute, where we're like that boat tossed in the storm. Amen. We want to be steady. We want to be firm. We want to be headed in the right direction consistently and constantly. And God has given us a tool. Amen. God has given us a tool that no matter what our circumstances are. 
we can get back on track and get back on track quickly. He has given us, there is so much in life that we have no control over. But he has given us one thing that we have complete control over, and this one thing, amen, can make the difference. Amen. Uh, I'm going to start off with a quote today uh, from a man by the name of Chuck Swindoll. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, outside of, of, of what Jesus Christ has himself has said, this quote is one of the truest things um, that I have ever heard come out of the mouths of a man other than Jesus Christ. Amen. For a long time, I actually had... This quote framed by my front door. Why? So that every time I walked out the door in the morning, before I set foot outside the door of my house, I knew I was being reminded, amen, of the importance of this one quote. Amen. Now, it's a little bit of a long quote, so I want you to, so in case you want to look it up for yourself, in case you want to print it out and frame it by your door, amen, then, then we certainly, Rose Edwards coming on. I see Deborah Cream coming on too. It's good to see the saints this morning because we have an important word for you today. One that can change your life. Amen. If it's not something you're already focused on, this is something when you focus on it is going to change your life. And the quote is by the name of a band by the name of Chuck Swindoll. So if you want to print it out, frame it and put it by your front door as well. Amen. You can know it. You can go on, Google it, print it out and frame it. Amen. But this is the quote and it's a little bit long, but Chuck Swindoll, this is what he said. He said, the longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on life. Attitude to me is more important than facts. It is more important than the past, than education, than money, than circumstances, than failure, than successes, than what other people think or say or do. It is more important than appearance, giftedness, or skill. It will make or break a company a church, or a home. Amen. The remarkable thing is that we have a choice. We have a choice every day regarding the attitude that we will embrace for that day. We cannot change our past. We cannot change the fact that people will act in a certain way. We cannot change the inevitable. Amen. But the only thing we can do is play on the one string that we have, and that is our attitude. I am convinced that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. And so it is with you. We are in charge of our attitudes. Now, I want to tell you, it's a quote, and it's a quote I read, and it's a quote I believe in. Amen. But this is the thing. I don't quote it, and I don't say it. Just because this man said it, it didn't make it true to me. What made it true to me is that I took it in, I lived it, and it made a difference in my life. What makes it true is that when I look at the lives of people around me, I see that it's true. Amen. And I want to tell you, we're going to start off. If you don't believe it, if you don't believe that life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it, if you don't believe that you can extend a good circumstance with your attitude, if you don't believe that, 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 that even a bad attitude can ruin the blessing that you get, if you don't believe that a good attitude can carry you through a rough time, I want to give you proof right here and right now. I want to tell you two stories. One is a story of a man who won $32 million in the lottery. Any of us would say, amen, that should be a blessing. And if the attitude is right, and if your focus is right, it could be a blessing, amen? But yet this man who won $32 million in the lottery, within two and a half years, he was divorced and then ended up committing suicide, amen? $32 million, and what did it lead to for him? It led to divorce and it led to suicide, amen? So don't tell me, amen, the, don't tell me that the attitude doesn't make a difference, amen? That 10, what you say, like Chuck Swindoll said, 10% is what happens to you, 90% is how you react to it. The 10% was fantastic, amen? Most of us would agree that that 10% should have been a blessing, amen? But yet this man ends up what? He ends up divorced and suicidal, amen? Now here's the flip side of it. Here's the flip side of the attitude. Amen. There was a young lady in our church. God bless her, an inspirational woman. Um, 
34 years old, little Nelly, amen, 34 years old, terminal cancer, and four children, amen, and yet this woman, this woman, she was still coming to church every chance she could get when she couldn't come to church. She was on Facebook talking about the goodness of God, bragging on God, telling everybody she knew, amen, about the fact that God, amen, showed her a love that no person ever could. She was even, man, she could barely stand, and yet she was still in church ushering, amen. And 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 you know what? And the cancer got her, amen. The cancer didn't get her, but the cancer got the flesh. And as she, and as and as the flesh was on its way out, you know what she said? She said to me, for me to live is Christ. If I live, I'm good. But to die is gain. She says, if the if my flesh ends up giving up, amen. She said, I still win because I'm going to heaven. So don't tell me, amen. Don't tell me that the 10%, the 90% can't overtake the 10% every time. Look at that, the 10%, $32 million versus terminal cancer with four children. Amen. That that is the mismatch of mis- mismatches. You know, that any, anybody anybody who is betting would bet on the 32 million to win every time and yet the 32 million led to defeat. Amen. The terminal cancer. Everybody would say, "No, I'm not betting on that one." But that's the one. Amen. That led to victory. All why? All because of the attitude, amen. Now, now you're all going. Come on, Elder Mike. Come on. It's it's Monday morning. We want a good positive. We don't want to hear about people committing suicide and terminal cancer. All right, I'll give it to you in a little bit friendlier terms, amen. Let's look at some sports, amen. In in the draft, amen. In the NBA draft, before Michael Jordan was taken, consider one of the greatest basketball players of all time. There was another there there was another man taken by the name of Sam Bowie. Amen. It, it's one of the greatest, you know, draft fumbles of all time that Sam Bowie got taken before Michael Jordan. Why? Because Sam Bowie, he was seven foot one, two hundred thirty-five pounds, and athletic. Amen. When 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 and you understand when scouts looked at him, I mean these are professionals looking, they said, This man's got everything he needs. This man's got all the gifts to be a dominant player in the NBA. Amen. And and so they took him over Michael Jordan. Amen. So here you got seven foot one, 235 pounds, Sam Bowie, athletic. What were, what was his accomplishments? 10 years in the NBA, a good, a good, a good player, a solid player for a number of years, 10.9 points, seven and a half rebounds, 2.1 assists, and zero championships. Amen. Then you got Michael Jordan, amen, taken after Sam Bowie. So 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 the experts thought Sam Bowie was gonna be better, amen. And and what so you got Michael Jordan six foot six, two hundred sixteen pounds. What were his statistics? Fourteen years in the league, thirty point one points per game, six point two rebounds per game, and five point three assists per game. And how many? Six count them six NBA championships. So what was the difference between these two players? Both, amen, both were were athletic, both had all the skills, both were looked at by experts and said, these are people that could be dominant in the league. And yet you see such a disparity, amen, from the one that was taken after the other, amen. And what was the difference? I want to tell you. Here's the the most telling statistic of Michael Jordan's career. And this is the difference, I think, between Michael Jordan and Sam Bowie, amen, because both had the skills. It was Michael Jordan was a nine-time all-defensive first-team honors. That's nine times. So nine out of 14 seasons, he was first-team all-defense. Amen? Because you know what? Defense is all about attitude. That's right. The difference between Sam Bowie and Michael Jordan, it wasn't the skill level. It wasn't the ability. It was the attitude. Amen? So so, so he, the, both were gifted. Both had the ability. And yet one became dominant. Why? Because of attitude. Why? They both had the 10%. The 10% was given 
one to both of them, but yet the attitude, the 90%, amen, turned one into the greatest player ever, while the other just became an also ran. He became a guy who played in the league, amen, but didn't change the league like Michael Jordan did. So now, so now here's the thing, all right, so we know, we, I think, I think we've shown here that attitude can make all the difference in your life, but the question is this. We don't want to stop at what can change your life. We want to look at through the scriptures, amen, how do we, amen, how do we maintain that good attitude? How do we get that good attitude, amen? And who better to look at? We don't want to look at, I mean, Michael Jordan's good to look at on on how to improve your attitude, what attitude to have. But you know what? I'm going to go to somebody else who's even better, even greater than Michael Jordan. Yeah, I said it. Even greater than Michael Jordan. We're going to look at Jesus Christ. Amen. And we're going to look at our scripture today is going to be from Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 through 11. That's right. We're going to look at Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 through 11. And then we're going to look at Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. So here's where we're starting out with Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 through 11, to see what our attitude should be, how we can go through life and live it in a way that we're, that we're not going to be subject to the ups and downs, that we're not going to be subject to the bad attitude that can turn our blessings into curses, that we're going to keep a good attitude, amen, that is going to continue to elevate us, that's going to take even the bad circumstances that come into our life, and it's going to turn them around, amen? So we're going to look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, and if I'm going too fast, somebody shout, slow down, amen, because this is an important one. I want to make sure we get it. Sherry Taylor coming on this morning. Good to see you, woman of God. Um, so we're looking right now at Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 through 11, and Philippians 2, chapter 3 starts out, do not, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Amen. So what's it about? How do we keep that good attitude? If we're less focused on what am I going to get, what can I do, what will my abilities allow, how am I going to get here, how am I going to get there? If we focus on the needs of others, it's going to make sure that we keep a good attitude. Amen. It's going to make sure that our attitude stays positive. I want to give you an illustration from my own life. Amen. And this is what I, and this is what I want to say. I used to be a mortgage originator, right? So I used to, I used to have to take applications from folks that were looking for a mortgage to purchase a house, looking to refinance their house. And, and I would process these applications and, and I would try and do my best to help people financially. Amen. To help them improve their lives. Amen. And, and when I was doing these mortgages, um, there would be times that early on, because of my attitude, because of my focus, see, what does what is, what is, what is the word tell us? The word tells us not to do everything out of vain conceit, not to do everything out of what we can get out of it, but to value others above ourselves. And so what happened was there were many times when I, when somebody would be looking to refinance their home or somebody would be talking about their finances. Evangelist Young, good to see you on here this morning. We're talking today about attitude, about the difference that attitude can make in our life. And right now we're looking at how we improve prove that attitude and keep it consistent. And it says here, right, so so I would have these customers and, and here's what I would be doing. They would have their mortgage, they would have their credit card bills and things, and I'd work up something for them and I'd be like, I'm going to tell you, here's here's what I'm going to do. We're going to consolidate these bills. We're going to roll them in with your mortgage. We're going to lower your interest rate by 4%. Here's what your payment is going to be. We're going to consolidate all the bills. We're going to lower your monthly payments by $400 a month. We're going to take your, your mortgage from a 20-year term down to a 15-year term. And you know what? Sometimes everything made sense about it. Everything I did was right. Everything I said was true. And yet these folks would some reason find a reason not to do this this thing that was going to just so much make their life financially easier. It would be something like, well, what about this $500 fee that I got to pay to do it? And they didn't even have to pay the fee out of pocket. It was rolled into the loan. So it was already included in their payment. And everything it wasn't costing them anything out of pocket. And yet this thing that made so much sense for them, they refused to do it. And early on, I'm going to tell you, 
I had a bad attitude when these things would happen. Why? Because early on, when I when I was when I was really just starting out, it was all about the paycheck. I was focused on I was focused on how much money I could make. Amen. Because I was I worked on commission. So if they didn't take it, I didn't get paid. And early on, that was my focus. And you know what? It didn't help my attitude. It frustrated it. It made me angry. I'd be like, what's wrong with these foolish people that they don't want to take it? Why? Because I was focused on me. What was I doing? I was doing it out of selfish ambition. I was doing it out of vain conceit because I was looking for the paycheck. Amen. And what did it do? It hurt my attitude. It made me less happy. It made me miserable. Amen. Because I put all this time into something that made sense for somebody and they didn't want to do it over something silly. Amen. But then what happened was it, around this time I had this, I had this change in my life. I had this shift in my life. And what happened? I started doing it now. Now here's, here's, and then I started looking at my job this way. It's my job to offer the people an opportunity to improve their lives, to improve their financial situation, to put themselves in a better pay- place to set themselves up for the future. Amen. And when I started having that attitude, when they didn't accept it, it no longer frustrated me. It no longer aggravated. It no longer affected my attitude. Why? Because you know what? I had done my job. I had done everything I could. Amen. I had educated them. I had let them know how to make their lives better. If they chose not to accept it, that's not on me. I did my job. And 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 from that point on, I started walking out the door happy every day. Because if we're if we're focusing on what we're capable of doing or what we think we're entitled to, we're always going to be frustrated. Because there are things that are always going to come along that are out of our control. Amen. There's going to be, I was driving defensively. I was driving safe. Someone ran a, a red light and ruined my car. Gave me, get injured me. Amen. There, there's going to be times I'm working hard on my job. I'm doing my job well. What? But the company doesn't do well. So what? So I get laid off anyway. So if we're focused just on what we're going to get out of it all the time, then we're always going to be frustrated because there's always going to be things that are out of our control. Amen. There are always going to be people out there that want to take your hard work and they want to make it their own. They want to reap the benefit from it. There are people out there, you can't stop these things. So if you're always focused on me, 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 you're always going to be frustrated. You're always going to have a bad attitude because you know what? You're always going to be disappointed, amen, by the things that come along, by the things that people do. But here's the thing. If we focus on others, Oh, so you know, then we're not going to have the bad attitude. If we're focused on others, we're not going to be disappointed. We're not going to be frustrated all the time. Because if we focus on their needs, we're always going to be content. You know why? Because nobody can stop me from smiling at him. Amen. Nobody can stop me from sharing a smile. Nobody can stop me from complimenting him. Nobody can stop me from walking down the street, seeing somebody and saying, man, I like that hat, man, that you look sharp today. Oh man. When I bump into an old friend, nobody can say, Oh, I am so glad to see you. I've been missing you. How are you doing? Showing the excitement when I see him. Nobody can stop me. Amen. Nobody can stop me from offering my ear to somebody who needs to talk. Nobody can stop me from praying for somebody who's going through. Amen. And nobody can stop me from telling anybody about the love that Jesus Christ has shown me. Amen. And this is the thing. So I look at it this way. It's my job to offer it. If they don't accept it, I'm not going to be frustrated. Why? Because I've done what God has called me to do. I have looked out for another person. I have extended myself to another person. And you know what? I believe too, even if they didn't receive the smile at that moment, it's somewhere inside of them touch them. Amen. That they're going to remember that somebody, amen, shared a smile with them that day. They may not accept the ear that I offer, but you know what? It's going to change their heart a little bit that someone cared enough to offer to listen. So we, if we're always doing what God has told us to do, if we're focused on other people, we may not always see the effect of the good things that we do. We may not always see the effect of, of our offer, but the effect is there nonetheless. It may not be the one that we were hoping for, but that's not our job. Our job is just to extend it. Amen. And I want to get, and I want to give you one more example. Amen. Of how this attitude of, of serving others. Amen. Can keep giving you a positive attitude. It can keep encouraging you and it may take some time, but that attitude of serving others will always, amen, take you to where you want to be anyway. I was working a job one time 
And, and I worked hard and I, and I, and I had, had kind of been transformed into this more focus on, on the customer, on the people that I'm serving. Amen. And, and, and there was this one woman in the office who did nothing all day long. She spent half the day in the manager's office, just chatting about their weekend, talking about what they were going to do. Amen. They were buddies. They were pals. Amen. And, and the manager would give this, this woman sales and she would hand things to her and she would give her raises and she would get recognition. Amen. And, and it seemed like she was never really doing the work. But you know what? I still went home feeling good every day. Why? Because when customers came in, they, they said, they said, where's Mike? I want to talk to Mike. They would sit and wait. Amen. They sit and wait 15, 20 minutes to see me, even when somebody else was available. So I walked out the door feeling good. And this is the thing. It's not just the feeling good either. This is what it does for you too. What happened was somebody saw the work that I did. Amen. And they took me on to a better job after a little while. Amen. Once they saw that I was stick to it, that it was what I was about, I got taken on to a better job. And here's the flip side. So my attitude of serving others, of looking out for others, of that they kept me smiling, they kept me doing it a different way, man. Not even just doing the job, but doing it a different way. Pat Stibbett coming on. So I received my blessing. Now here's what happened. The one that went in with a bad attitude who just wanted to sit and gossip with the boss, well shortly after I left, the boss ended up leaving, going to another job too. Now she's there by herself. Amen. She's there with, by herself, but with the same attitude. And don't you know, within about six months, amen, after, after I was gone and the manager was gone, she was fired from the job. So that attitude, that attitude, that attitude, it will make a difference every time. It's going to give you more joy. Amen. While you're going through, but eventually it's going to take you to where you want to be as well. Now, and now here's the thing. We may say, yeah, but I have a reason to have a bad attitude. My mom never let me have a puppy dog growing up, so I have the right to have a bad attitude. I never got the birthday party I wanted, so I have the right to have a bad attitude, right? We, we, we can think of all these reasons why we got, and, and then there are serious things. It's not always, it's not always the puppy dog. It's not always the birthday party. Maybe you're saying, I have the right to have a bad attitude because I ate right, I exercised, and I still ended up with cancer. You, you may be sitting there thinking, I have the right to have a bad attitude. You may think, I did work hard on my job. I put in 20 years there and they let me go. Amen. Without a warning. Amen. Without any pension, without any kind of severance, without anything to carry me through. I have the right to have a bad attitude. And I want to tell you right now, you do not have the right to have a bad attitude. Amen. There is no right to have a bad attitude. You know why? Because we are the children of God and we are disciples of Jesus Christ. If there was ever anybody who had a right to have a bad attitude, it would have been Jesus Christ. So if, so if he didn't have a bad attitude, you know what? We can't have a bad attitude either. So I want to read on now. So now I'm going to continue in, in second, uh, in Philippians chapter two. I'm going to read here verses five through 11. It says, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset. Mindset is another word for what? For attitude. Have the same mindset, have the same attitude as Christ Jesus who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. He didn't come down saying, I'm God, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna use it to make myself rich, I'm gonna use it to make myself popular, I'm not gonna use it to make myself famous. He didn't decide to use it to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, amen, he humbled himself, becoming obedient even to death on a cross, amen. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place. What I say, when, when I was going through, amen, eventually what happened? God took me to a higher place because of my attitude. So we see God, what's the scripture saying so far? Jesus took on the form of a man. He made himself obedient even to death on the cross. But what happened was he did it with the right attitude. He was exalted to the highest place and he was given a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord 
to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So if you think you've got a reason to have a bad attitude, let's look at Jesus' resume. You claim him as your Lord and Savior. Amen. You claim to be a disciple of his. Let's look at his resume and decide, and then you think about it, and you and you let me know. If you still believe you got a reason to have a bad attitude, you shout it out on here. So here, here's Jesus' resume. He is God. He, he could have stayed in heaven, never, never felt disappointment, pain, sickness, tiredness, fatigue, none of it. Yet he came down to earth. He put himself in this dirty, smelly, tired, hungry, thirsty flesh. And he walked for miles and miles of dirty, dusty roads in all kinds of weather, in the heat, in the rain, in all kinds of things. He did this to minister to the people, to heal the people, and to teach a bunch of ungrateful, backstabbing, illogical, emotional, unappreciative people that he came to save. Amen. And what was his payback? His payback is that he was mocked, he was beaten, he was spit upon, he was hung on a cross, his beard was pulled out, even to the point of death. And yet, what was his attitude? On the cross, he said, forgive them, God, for they know not what they do. So do you still think, if you do, answer honest, do you think that you have a reason. If Jesus Christ is your Lord, if you are his disciple, do you really believe that you have a reason to have a bad attitude? You do not. I do not. We do not have a reason to have a bad attitude. Why? Because we are disciples of Jesus Christ. That doesn't just mean knowing what he knows. That doesn't mean just accepting his life. That doesn't, his love. That doesn't mean just accepting salvation. That means experiencing everything that he has experienced. Amen. So what is it? What is the key? Amen. Right? It's it's not always so easy. We may know that, that we can have a better attitude by focusing on serving others. We may know that, that a better attitude. Carl Mahan, good to see you on this morning, sir. We're talking about attitude today. And, and I want to encourage you, anybody who joined this one late today, make sure you go back and watch the whole thing because this, this is a lesson, amen, that can change your life. Amen. Go back and watch this whole thing. Um, so what was the difference? Why is it that Jesus, amen, was able to keep this attitude of forgiveness, this attitude of love, amen, this positive attitude, even through everything he went through? That's where we get to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, amen, that book of wisdom, amen, that book of revelation of just truths that, that, that blow your mind. They seem so simple, but yet they blow your mind, amen, because when you apply them to your life, Oh, they make all the difference. And this is what Proverbs 3 and 5 says. This is why Jesus was able to have a good attitude. This is why we should be able to maintain and keep a good attitude. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. For this, we're going to go back to that opening comparison. Remember, we talked about a man who won $32 million in the lottery and yet ended up divorced and committing suicide. We talked about a 34-year-old woman with four children who had terminal cancer and was as positive as can be. What was the difference? He put his trust in the money, amen? He didn't put his trust in the Lord. So what happened? He found out that the money in the bank wasn't making him happy. So what happened? He went out, he bought himself some houses. He went out, he bought himself some cars. He went out and tried to buy himself some friends. Amen. And you know what? He realized that the houses didn't make him happy. He realized that, that the friends didn't make him happy. They were just putting the touch on him. He realized that the cars didn't make him happy. He didn't re realize that just giving his children money didn't make him happy. And then what happened? The tax man comes around and says, oh, by the way, you never paid us. You never paid us the 15 million in taxes that you owed. Now he's in desperation. Amen. Why? Because the money has failed him. Because he put, his, he put his trust in the money and the money can never do it for you. Amen. But what happened now? What's the difference in the attitude for the young lady? She put her trust 
in the Lord. She stood on the very promises of God. She said, you know, I know that my God never sleeps. My God never slumbers. My God is not a man that he should lie. So if he said it, he is going to make it come to pass. And she said, you know what he told me? He told me I can work all things to good for those who love me, who have been called according to my purpose. He said, I am going to bless to a thousand generations. She didn't even have to worry about the kids. Why? Because he said, I will bless to a thousand generations generations those that love me amen he said i am going to prepare a place for you and you are going to be able to come there with me she stood she trusted in the lord god amen and she stood on his promises because he is immovable he is unchangeable he is the creator the maintainer and the sustainer of all things the money will be there why because god made all the money the houses will be there why because god made all the houses amen you just got to trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. Stop trying to figure it out for yourself. Stop trying to rely on, on your mind, your abilities, the people around you. Amen. And I know we're going a little bit over today. Amen. But this is an important one. So I want to make sure that we really took our time and I slowed down for this one. And I am going to throw one more scripture in here. Um, so we, we've looked at we've looked at the example, amen, in Jesus of maintaining that positive attitude. And we've looked at we've looked at how we do it. We do it by trusting in the Lord. Amen. Stop depending on the money. Stop depending on the government. Stop depending on the job. Amen. And depend on the Lord. And you're gonna find, Amen, you've got a much better attitude. Now what are the consequences of a good attitude? Real quick here we're gonna close out with the consequences of a good attitude. We're gonna look at Philippians chapter two verses 14 and 15 and it says do all things without grumbling or questioning that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation and here it goes here's the here's the impact of maintaining that positive attitude among whom you shine as a light in the world that's right attitude is contagious amen if you if you keep a good attitude even through the trouble people are going to know you got trouble in your life people are going to see the things that you go through but if you maintain a good attitude in your life you are going to improve somebody else's attitude if you depend on the lord and you let people know that it's the lord that brought you through that illness that brought you through that relationship problem that brought you through that financial problem amen you are going to improve someone else's attitude attitude is contagious amen that's the impact that's how we change the world by going out there with a good attitude letting people know where that good attitude comes from amen this is the consequence of that good attitude it's not just about what you get out of it it's not just about the improvement in your life but you're gonna find you're gonna find you improve the lives of your children when you have a good attitude because they're not gonna get desperate and do stupid things every time they run into a little bit of trouble why because they saw mom they saw dad go through some trouble they saw them do it the right way and they saw that it all came out okay you're gonna improve the attitude of, of your friends you're gonna improve the attitude of your co-workers and then what's gonna happen now you're gonna be even happier why because you're not gonna have the drain around you amen you're not gonna have the people around you sucking the attitude out of you but as you improve the attitudes of the people around you it's gonna bring you all that much more joy it's gonna bring you all that much more happiness it's gonna bring you all that much more prosperity amen but here's the other thing about contagious attitudes amen and this is the last point I'm gonna make you've got to watch the attitudes of the people that you're around amen but it's just like a good attitude is infectious a bad attitude is infectious too. So, so you got to realize you may go in with a good attitude, but you're hanging out with 15 people with bad attitudes. Amen. Your, your one good attitude may not be enough to turn around the attitudes of those 15 people. And if it's not, then the attitudes of those 15 people are going to drain your good attitude. You're going to start seeing the world the way that they do. So the last point in maintaining that good attitude and having that good attitude is to, is to surround yourself with people that have good attitudes. Now, we still want to reach out to people with bad attitudes. We still want to reach out to people who haven't accepted Jesus yet because we want to bring them along. But make sure that that bad attitude is not what you surround yourself with every day, day in and day out. Put yourself around people with positive attitudes and then you as a group 
go after the one that has a bad attitude. Don't you by yourself try and go after the group of 15 that has a bad attitude. You get your 15 friends that have a good attitude and you go after the one with the bad attitude. There is strength in numbers. Amen. So I just want to close out today. I want to go back to the quote that we started out with. I want to read this to you one more time. Amen. Again, this is not my quote. This is Chuck Swindoll. And he said, the longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on life. Attitude to me is more important than facts. It is more important than the past, than education, than money, than circumstances, than failure, than success, than what other people think or say or do. It is more important than appearance giftedness or skill, it will make or break a company, a church, a home. The remarkable thing is we have a choice every day regarding the attitude we will embrace for that day. We have a choice in the attitude we will embrace for that day. We can't change our past. We can't change the fact that people will act a certain way. We can't change the inevitable. The only thing we can do is play the one string we have, and that is our attitude and I love it. This is, I just, I just kind of go to, I, I have, I have put it all down to this one line here. I am convinced that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. And so it is with you. We are in charge of our attitude. So whatever the 10% is that comes at you today, amen. Well, whether the 10% is good, bad, or indifferent, amen. Keep in mind that your 90%, amen, your 90% is going to keep the good going. Your 90% is going to bring you out of the, the, that, that bad circumstance that might come up. So remember that today, that you are in charge of your attitude. Remember that servant mentality that gave Jesus the good attitude. And most importantly, trust in the Lord your God. Put all your faith in Him. Rely on Him. And you're going to find, amen, that things are going to work out for your good. Thank you all for tuning in today. Again, this is Elder Michael Stibick with Higher Ground Temple. It has been a blessing to bring this word to you. And I know, I don't know about you, but I know some people that have a bad attitude. Amen. I know some people that need this lesson. So I'm going to encourage everybody today, share this message. Amen. This is a message that the world needs. Amen. Share this message. Put it out there. Let the world see it, that they are in charge of their attitude. They don't have to settle anymore. They can rely on that thing. First of all, the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, to bring us around. And secondly, that attitude, amen, that will carry us through the storm. So I thank you all for tuning in. Um, let's just pray, Lord, as we go forth today, God. Let us go forth with a good attitude, Lord. Let us bring with us that attitude of gratitude, Lord, knowing that you've got everything under control, that the good that happens, the bad that happens, God, no matter what it is, you're going to extend the good when we, when we, re, when we react properly to it, and you're going to shorten the the bad when we react properly to that. So I ask you, Lord, just to touch your people today, God. Let this message go forth. Let it change people's lives. Let it change the world. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. You have a great day. You have a great week. And I want to look forward to being back on here at eight o'clock on Thursday morning to share with you again. God bless and you all have a great day.